Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, it's very nice to see all of you here, awesome people. And I will try to talk about stuff they didn't taught me in the academy, in high school, or in institute. And to start, I want to show you the most awesomest slide in my presentation about myself. Yeah. So I think you're very interested in it, and we'll spend about half of presentation talking about me. Uh, so yeah, here's my picture, if you recognize me. So my primary interests in technology field, in IT field, is Java and Android technologies. I also work in Civico with Java, enterprise stuff, and also teach some Android Java courses at javaguru.lv. Uh, and the first thing that I want to tell you about, in any institution, in IT institution. They don't teach you how to make presentations. So, no presentation skills, and that's why I've decided to lack any presentation skills that I've gained in my experience. So, that's why the whole presentation will be stickman style. Yeah? <coughs> because everyone knows how to draw a stickman from, I, I don't know, kindergarten or something like this. So, not that hard to do. So, let's start. Uh, the presentation will be divided into three parts. The problem part, why, why do I tell you everything? The discussion part, well, I will think loudly about the stuff I'm talking about, about the problem, and the proposition. So, what, what I propose for you to solve the problems that I've already stated. So, the problem, yeah. When a student comes to an university, he thinks that after graduation uh, he will gain all the knowledge required for him to start working. To be a successful IT or developer or tester or I don't know, something like this. But in other fields, maybe it's true. So if you go for economics or logistics or I don't know, art, you gain the knowledge you need. But in IT field, it's a bit different. So. If you're a developer, you have many spaces where you can go. You can go to enterprises, start working on a startup, go freelancing for small companies or small clients. And now I want to talk a bit about each of the, uh, of the options that you have as a developer. Why do you need it? Because I want to state what skills are required for any field. And we will start with a startup. Yeah. So, usually startups have a small team of five, seven people, yeah? and they produce their project, which is uh, already a production version. So they don't outsource it, or I don't know. They so they doing the stuff for themselves, and that's why they usually don't have uh, all money in the world to. Uh, ask people to develop some small modules. So usually startups don't, don't have database developers or, I don't know, a lot of testers, a lot of UI developers. So they need as much skills in a single person because the team is small. Freelancing. Freelancing is also an interesting part of our world where people try to make some small projects, some small uh, modules by themselves. So usually they don't have a team at all, so they work alone. That's both a pro and a con, because working alone is awesome. You can stay home, you can watch I know, movies and then call something, drink some beer, etc., etc. Et but the problem is, when you lack a team, you cannot consult with them, you cannot decide some uh, interesting solution, and, uh, and you get something like this, if you are not uh, really successful and know a lot of stuff about the topic. And the last, but not the least, enterprises. So enterprises also seems very shiny. Uh, you can work, maybe you'll get some interesting uh, topics, interesting stuff to develop, but the problem is enterprises are very linked to the market. So if a client tells that we won't support this technology, then that's it. You won't support this technology. You, you, you have, you'll have very, very 
uh, tough job to just uh, to really convince him if you want it. Maybe if you're just a developer, you cannot convince a client at all because the stuff is done by project manager or I don't know something else. So different fields, startups, enterprises, freelancing, and each of it uh, requires a different set of skills, as I already said. So enterprises can have a lot of people uh, that are specialized in a small field of study. They have database developers, testers, UI developers, backend developers, I don't know, any of this stuff. Freelancing is more specific job, so you're hired to do uh, something that you already know because they cannot hire you for something that you don't know. It's absurd. And startups are a much broader scale. Yeah. So a lot of skills required to start working and what do you learn in the academy? You learn pencil. Yeah. <coughs> so as you can see, the pencil isn't similar to any of this drawings. So how can you what what can you do with a, with a pen? What can you do with a pen? Right. You can write or you can draw. But the problem is if you don't know what to draw, you cannot draw it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, the discussion phase. So I've stated the problem. The problem is if you don't know what you want to do with your life, what you want to develop, the skills that you gain in the universities aren't enough because they don't tell you what you can do with them. They tell you, hey, this is a cool algorithm, this is a cool technology, go, go have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, question, computer science. Who is studying computer science? Lots of people, yeah? So, who knows what computer science means? Oh, three people, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's a list of all things that uh, that are computer science. So it's programming language theory, computer graphics, programming, algorithms, theory of computation, artificial intelligence, computer architecture, computer security, computer networks, etc., etc., etc. Everyone agrees with it. Yeah, that's bad because computer science isn't programming. And it's a very interesting fact. So here's a quote, it's not mine, but I found it somewhere in Wikipedia, I guess. So computer science is a math. The study of what is computable and what is efficiently computable. And the second quotation is a small disclaimer. So in computer science, you can you compute an algorithm, but you don't require a single character of code. So no coding done in computer science. And that's why a lot of students complain that, oh, in universities they don't teach us how to program. They don't teach us Java, C Sharp, etc., etc. And yeah, <laughs> because you went for a computer science, you didn't went for programming. And that's why our students are being fooled by themselves, because they expect something cool, but they don't necessarily go to uh, this, this whole study. Yeah? So, but when you go working, when you try to join some team, you need a lot of technology, a lot of, uh, you need to know a lot of technology or programming languages. So there are a big variety of technology stacks like .NET or Java technologies or Ruby technologies, etc. etc. Yeah. So here's a slide with some of most interesting ones, most popular ones. Yeah, by the way, this is how I draw a cloud. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, it's cloud. <laughs> because nowadays everyone knows what cloud is. E everything is in clouds. Dropbox is in clouds. Google Docs is in clouds. So technologies will be in clouds too. Uh, yeah. So what do I mean by this? Theory and programming are different set of skills. So uh, universities teach you the theory, the computer science. Yeah, computer science. And at work, you need programming. So, what can be possibly done? So, the question is, where can I learn all this stuff that I need to start work? I have a proposal. Uh, 
you can learn it by working somewhere. Because when you work, you are obligated to do something. So you have, they pay you money and they expect you to do something. And if you just sit and, okay, I don't know what next. No, no, this, I don't like it also. And it's, no, they, they want to hire, hire you and uh, maybe break the contract or something. So, ah, it's wrong slide, okay, yeah. Also, online courses. There's a lot of cool online courses online. Yeah, like Coursera, Code School. Uh, yeah, the, the, this image is broken somehow. It was a PNG with a transparent background, but somehow PDF broke it. MIT courses, Code Academy, Udacity. So, who did learn something from one of the sites? Raise your hand. Yeah, so, quite a lot of people. It's quite good to see, quite enjoying. So, you understand why they're cool. A lot of maybe cool information, but problem is they uh, usually don't get very deep. So they give you that information that you need to start, but they don't get very deep into like, I don't know, I didn't, didn't see any courses on XMA, for example, in these courses or Hibernate or something like this. So strict technologies that uh, are required for you. Yeah, also there are meetups. In Latvia we have a lot of meetups. It was about three or four at, I don't know, five years ago. Now it's about 2030, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So there are strict ones that are based on one of the technology stacks. For example, Java user group, the Python user group, Ruby user group, JavaScript user group, the Oracle user group, a lot of user groups. There are less strict that are uh, based on different aspects of a uh, developer's life, like Agile Latvia, Latvia Developers Network, and Dev Club, and also Tech Hub as well. So, if you have time, if you are interested, it's very nice to join them because they cover a lot of stuff that you really need, that you really will stumble upon in your developer's life. Yeah, so back to the presentation. So we have theory and we have programming. Uh, so how can we and why do we need this theory at all? So how can we transfer our theory skills to programming skills? I have a real life example that I've stumbled upon in my working days. A small problem. Yeah. So we have some kind of form with a full name field. What do we need to do? We have a database, a table with our clients. We receive uh, different information. We receive the information worldwide. So we get it from Spain, we get it from Italy, from America, and we have this full name field. And we need to look into our database and save as much uh, as much. No, we, we should link it as much as possible. So we have uh, the same person in different countries which is who is traveling. We need to link it. Yeah. So the problem is, and also we need to split the full name into some tokens. For example, name and surname. Yeah. So it seems like a simple task. Yeah. So we have name and surname. We need to split it, name surname, and store it into database. But it's easy, seems easy. But there are also things like this. So if we have the same synonyms of our full name, we should also uh, somehow uh, recognize it. And this, uh, this, this full names are equal, and we need to link them somehow. Uh, if you just study some programming languages, it doesn't code it because it's an algorithmic uh, task, and you need to think. So there are a lot of uh, interesting algorithms that I've stumbled upon. There are phonetical linking algorithms. There are Lexical phonetic, uh, lexical algorithms, etc., etc., and a lot of things uh, is covered in uh, computer science, uh, computer science courses. Uh, so, where uh, does anyone see the problem? So, uh, with splitting the full name, so who thinks he can make a program that splits a 
full name into tokens, like uh, surname and uh, first name. Yeah. So who can do it? So I think I've scared everyone, yeah? OK, so what's the problem? The problem is if we have different uh, nationalities, we have different set of, uh, set of tokens. For example, which is a name and which is a surname? Any ideas? Huh? Gabriel is a name. Yeah, so Gabriel is a name, Garcia Marquez is a surname. That is the next. What, what's the name? Yeah, so George Bernard is a name. Shaw is a surname. And uh, so you need to think about how to uh, recognize it. So you don't have a strict, uh, strict solution. You need to think about it. And yeah, so, so something more. So you have <laughs> it's quite hard to split some in tokens because yeah. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that theory sometimes enhances your programming skills. If you know what you're going to do, what you need to do, you can take some theory knowledge and transfer it uh, to your help. But if you don't know what you're going to do, then no help you can receive because theory is a plain theory. Question and answers. If you have any questions, please ask. I'll try to answer them as much as possible. Yep. Uh, you started talking about startups, enterprise, yep. and uh, 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 yeah. But you said you work for Cisco, so I yep. guess that's an enterprise, right? Yep. Uh, was that a conscious choice or just by accident? Uh, 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 interesting question. <laughs> uh, they have cookies in Cisco, so. <laughs> The thing is, uh, so I'm interested in Java technologies and Android, so I wanted to seek a place where they develop Java uh, in Java. The second thing, I wanted to have a part-time job because I study in university, so I cannot uh, spend all my time working because it's quite hard to study at uh, Saturdays or at, uh, at how is it? <laughs> evenings, at evenings, yeah. So basically, that was my choice because I liked the atmosphere, uh, the things that they develop. And that's why I've joined the team. Uh, it's not, not because I was deciding where to go, an enterprise or a startup or freelancing. I just liked the technology and atmosphere of the company and I decided to join. So I guess that's it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, They don't tell you different uh, set of paths that you can go. So they don't tell you you can go work as a PHP developer or as a Java developer or as a .NET developer. They just tell you everything they know. And uh, a lot of uh, a lot of teachers don't know the new technologies as well as uh, developers. Yeah. So uh, that's a big problem, and the solution isn't isn't uh, so there is isn't uh, a best solution for it uh, if you want to decide where to go you just need to uh, talk to developers go to meetups maybe you can start with some kind of work and then decide do you like it do you like this path path or you want to choose another one so it's it is, isn't that simple and yeah it's a problem so i don't have any remedy for for this problem Yep. Um, in the presentation you showed the slide where you basically had theory and programming divided by a gap. Yep. Yeah, that one. Um, basically what you said is that 
in order to get a job, I need to know programming. No, it's usually so, yeah. Yeah, so then I guess it would be better for me to skip university and just take some courses and get to some meetups and just find a job without even... Yeah, so the problem is the only, as, as, I, as I can see it, the only things that university give you that uh, you cannot receive from online courses is that you gain a certificate of uh, signed by your country. Yeah. So you have a bachelor's degree and that's about it that uh, distinguish online courses from universities. For example, if you want to work at university as well, you cannot just walk in and say, I'm a pool developer, hey, I know everything, so I want to teach stuff. Because you need a magister degree, a master degree, or a bachelor degree to start study, uh, to start start teaching stuff, and a lot of organizations also uh, write down that an employee should have some kind of degree for a big position. For example, senior developer, if I'm not mistaken, should require a, a master degree or something. Like that. I know that. Plain developer should gain, should have a bachelor degree, which I'm lacking at the moment. So I'm, I'm a junior, <laughs> because I like bachelor. Uh, another thing that I can tell about about institutions is that if you pass a bachelor or a master degree, that it shows that you can work under pressure. <laughs> So it's quite hard to finish it because if you're a good developer, you know a lot of, a lot of stuff, like Iger said, it's quite boring in the university. And if you skip it and decide to let it go, then you're not so strong because <laughs> you, you see the problem and you decide to skip it because you don't like it. And so it shows a person how, how, can, how, how, how resilient he is. Yep. I agree with that in a new university and in a degree. I agree it's a basic or theoretical education. Mm -hmm. Then I have a question. Maybe it's an only professional education like that? Because they try to be balanced with the theory and practice. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of good examples abroad. For example, MIT, uh, Boston University, Stanford University that uh, teach programming as well as they teach theory. Uh, and a lot of cool guys, for example, uh, there are a lot of uh, not so popular languages like Elm, uh, la uh, which students, which w was developed by students. Yeah. So MIT is the, the biggest hub of technology right now, and a lot of students are geniuses, and it's quite hard to get to get your uh, your education there. Uh, but the problem is. The biggest hubs of uh, information technologies institutions have a lot of great uh, teachers, and there aren't a lot of great teachers everywhere. So uh, small universities can't afford to uh, gain them. So if you're a great developer and you want to teach, you you're doing it because you just want to teach, not because of money. Because uh, usually teachers don't get a lot of money uh, salary in uh, universities, yeah. So... Uh, what is the best balance between uh, theoretical and practical lessons at universities and academics? So, and if, how do you think? Yeah, so if you go for a university, you should study somewhere else. You should study programming in online courses or you should go to some uh, courses as well, like, I don't know, program masters or Java guru, yeah. and. When, you, when you, you're taught stuff that you you can use in your uh, daytime job, because yeah, so programming I don't know how to learn it in university because it's only a, a small uh, a small degree. I know that in uh, Rigas Technical University a ma master degree is a lot more interesting. They have a lot more topics like Java, Ruby, Python, and if you stay. For a master's degree, maybe you'll get the knowledge that are required for you to work. Because do you have do you have a Python at you? I am studying. Ah, uh, uh, no. Okay. I am studying. 
Okay, so it was uh, yeah. So. There was something like that in RTU, uh, yeah. the first course at uh, telecommunications, like Python or something. Yeah, so, so basically when you go for a master's degree in our universities, you go deeper, a bit deeper, and that set of skills will be enough for you to start working. So if you uh, pass bachelor and master's, and you're as, as well as a bachelor with, with some knowledge some working experience or online courses. In Latvia, the big problem about studying at the university is basically the technical mm -hmm. that we learn a lot of theory. And we have a lot of teachers that well are not up to date mm -hmm. on modern things. And for example abroad in many universities uh, large percentage of teachers are actually people who work in the industry work. Yep. So do you think the situation can improve here or will it will be thing is it isn't a problem, problem. It isn't a local problem. So the same problem is almost everywhere in Europe. Yeah. In I don't know. So uh, there are a lot of articles online that tells how, how I am getting bored as a student. So I think it isn't our problem. How it can be improved is hard to tell. Yeah, so we just need enthusiastic people that want to teach other students, and that's about it. So if we have enthusiastic people to teach, we'll get a great uh, course in our uh, high schools. Yep. Can you list your favorite courses online? Favorite courses online? So uh, at code. At Coursera, there was a course called Functional Programming in Scala, and it was completed, it was finished about a week ago. It was a very cool course. Uh, maybe it isn't also as deep enough as you want it to be, but if you don't know anything about functional programming, it covers the basic of it. Yeah. Uh, also, at Udacity, they have a, a Java course, they have a computer science course with Python. They have uh, building your own web browser with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Yeah. So the courses are interesting and they're helpful. Uh, which are the best ones? I looked only on uh, the ones that I've told you. So I, don't, I, I cannot judge uh, uh, someone else. Yeah. Which one would you recommend for beginners? Uh, for beginners of what? For beginners of programming? For beginners of... And so it depends on your set of skills. So if you know object-oriented programming, maybe it's fun to look into functional programming. If you don't know object-oriented programming, you should look for object-oriented programming. Because for my taste, object-oriented programming is should be the first uh, step into programming. Because it's a bit more easier than uh, functional one. Yeah. So, also, also, also. Oh yeah, I think that covers it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I have a question um, uh, about those choices again. Where to go? Mm -hmm. uh, you were speaking about the choices that the person that graduated. Um, IT, yep. computer science. Yep. Um, let's say from another perspective, the people who don't have an IT education, but they do have some IT courses and stuff, programming. So, of those three, what, which one would be preferable for those people? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we had our examples in our company where a lawyer a lawyer, a very professional lawyer, went to our code school at City Code, which will be hosted again this summer. So maybe we'll talk about it after. I don't know. We will have a speaker talk or something, uh, a sponsor talk. Yeah? Uh, I think Vasily will. Ah, okay, yeah. Vasily will talk about it later. So she went to a code school. She learned a bit of Java and started working as a Java developer as a trainee Java developer and so went up, 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 and woohoo! You fired a new lawyer? Huh? You fired a new lawyer? No, 
it, it was a lawyer who decided to switch professions. So she didn't have a lot of skills, a lot of developer skills, but she managed to, to switch professions. And she didn't have any IT education at all. And it's possible. You just need to have your will and an interest to go study yourself. Because if you want to change your profession, from, for example, from economic guy, and you go to a university to study computer science, it's about a waste of time, I guess. Because uh, you can learn stuff yourself for a second, second degree. Yeah. So if it's a first degree, you can go to computer science and learn all the basics that you need. But uh, yeah, something like this. But how about re real facilities in Latvia now for that kind of people? Uh, are there some job proposals for, for, like, for the uh, developers assistant positions where you can learn something and, and grow up? Yeah, yeah. so this is another topic. Uh, for my taste, you should, if you want to start uh, working, you should start from a small company. Why is this? Because the smaller company gets, as I already told, the more responsibility you have. So the responsibility are split. Uh, so if you go for enterprise, uh, they can take you and say, hey, here's CSS, try to find some bugs and fix it. And it's your every time job because uh, they maybe don't have time to, to, uh, to taught you something. Yeah? But if you're going to a small company, uh, they don't have a, a big amount of people and they uh, try to teach you because they need a developer that uh, can do everything. So, uh, is it possible to uh, find a job in a small company? Sure. Uh, but it, it, it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of findings. Yeah? If you want to go to an enterprise, a big company, they also have spots left. As I already told, we have a Java school this summer, so there are 10 spots for a Java trainee. We have uh, iOS school, we have yeah. Java school, and we have testing school. Yeah. And so for each of these schools, we're going to have 10 students. Yeah. So, yeah, Accenture does the same thing. So they have code schools, they also take some students and uh, teach stuff, uh, teach stuff also. I don't know, Forticom, but my class Nikki ones, do have schools also. So you just need to try to find find the company and see what they're proposing. Maybe, it's, I'm almost sure, they will take, take some company will take you. <laughs> so it just depends which one. Where, where, to, where is the best place where to look for proposals? Reclama LV? Ah, oh, I, I don't know about Reclama LV. So, uh, the best way is to go, as I think, is to go for meetups. Because at different meetups, different companies propose themselves. So, hey, we're cool, please, please join us. Uh, there's about 10 or 15 different companies that are presenting. Uh, and seeking for it for uh, for for employees uh, every every now and then. So if you go for to, to Jock or to Latvian Developers Network or to Dev Club, you'll see companies that will try to grab you to make you <laughs> their employee. Uh, Reclama of that, I don't know. I didn't try to find a job uh, by some kind of CV, or, or by, by some kind of advertisement. I just know a company and I ask them, so what about me joining you? And that's all. So I think it's about uh, the more people you know, so, uh, the easier it is to get a job. So the prime, the prime goal is to get as many tech guys that you know and they will help you somehow. So it's yeah you, you can try to find a triclama LV or CV LV or something like this, but I, I I cannot guarantee how how quick the response or do do the response at all. So I don't know about it. So do you recommend the same chart or something? 
I will not recommend any any company today. You, you can ask me somewhere. Drop me by the hand and ask you ask me somewhere uh, at the vestibule of a school. I recommend joining a company. It doesn't matter which company. Each company has its pros and cons, and it's 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 complicated. Yeah. So if you like a logo, for example, you should join. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a junior developer, um, do you get an interesting tasks at your work? Yeah, so the problem is it also depends on your... Uh, so, if you get a lot of boring job, you can go to HR department and tell that oh, I don't like boring job, give me some job. And possibly they will give you something interesting. So. Uh, it, it depends on you and how you react to a boring job. So if they give you a boring job, you say, okay. And they'll see, oh, he's glad. He's, yeah, so he's happy. So let's give him some more boring job. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you share some more experience of what it is to be like uh, as a programmer? Like, uh, you know, Anybody who's been involved in, in, pro, some, pro, pro, pro. <laughs> in some sort of profession, they have their own sticks, you know, like yeah. auditors, sometimes they work like 24 hours a day and, and it's normal for them. Yeah. Again, other professions have their own specifics. Is there any specific for, for the job of programming or is it just I come at 9 in the morning and leave at 5 in the evening and that's it? <laughs> if you work as a programmer, you should enjoy coding stuff. If you don't enjoy coding stuff, that, uh, your work will, will become your, your nightmare because you, you, you sit at the computer and write something down, write something down, look, look into Facebook and go and grab a coffee and develop some more, develop some more and it's boring. But if you enjoy doing the stuff you do, then it's awesome because you develop the stuff you like, then you grab some coffee, you look some Facebook and you develop stuff you like. So it's a win-win. Where is the difference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, sounds funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we get the chance to study again in MIT, as you said, yes. uh, if you get a chance to study in MIT USA, so if you want to study there, or do you think this, this certificates, master's or bachelor's are the Yeah, so, so pro yeah, so about abroad, about abroad universities. I think university, no, uh, the big universities are awesome, but the problem is almost everyone from the, the list I've told, Massachusetts Institute, Boston Institute, and which one? Stanford. Uh, they have paid, uh, so you, you should pay money for uh, the courses. And they have a lot of exercises and you will have all your time waste uh, all of your time taken by this exercise. So you won't have a lot of time working. Yeah. So you'll be deep into studying. If it's okay for you, it's cool. You'll get a lot of knowledge. It will be interesting. But if you want to be more free, you can go to any I don't know Baltic universities. You can study something works and enjoy your life. So party every day, party all night and work. work. <laughs> so it's hard to say. It de also depends on the person. So if a person wants to learn very deep uh, and doesn't get distracted, MIT is absolutely a choice for you. Yeah. So if you want to get some freedom, you can, yeah. So for example, we have in our university, I won't tell the name, but you can Google for it. You can Google for me and some can find it. We have only four days of studies and about three, three, two lectures a day. And if you just study without working, then <laughs> you'll break your house <laughs> because it is really hard to party all, all day, all night, all week. And, and you only have about, I don't know, two exercises per month. Wow, <laughs> that's hard, really hard. 
Yep, that's that's about it. What I wanted to say. Any more questions? Well, if there are no questions, then the last slide. No, it's not the last slide. This no. <laughs> this one's the last slide. So I want to invite you all for a meetup, for a workshop at. June 15, we will have an Android workshop, uh, which will be hosted by Latvian Developers Network, and I think it will be based in Tech Hub, as far as I know, but maybe it will be subject to changes. What we will do there? We will have a small crash course of Android to start to, to get acquaintance to it, and then we will develop a small application that is called RSS Freedom. Yeah, so maybe you know at July the second or or something like this, Google will stop supporting their Google Reader. Who use Google Reader? Not so many people. Yeah. Who use Feedly? <laughs> okay. So if you're frustrated because Google is shutting down your RSS reader, your favorite ones, you can join us and develop your own RSS reader. And then You'll be a proud owner of your startup, and you then you can try to sell it, I don't know, or something like this. So, please, please come. It will be glad to see you all.